Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this video, I will be doing a tutorial on how I made this beach scene. Um, it is a resin art painting and I will go into a full explanation of my materials, how I mixed everything, how I poured it. Um, so if you are interested in learning how to do so, please keep watching. As always, I will make sure to link everything below for what I used, and um, I will also include my blog post for how I set up and protect my workspace and myself. Um, but here is just a quick overview of everything I used for this piece, and here is just an example of what my workspace looks like. So when I say that I balance my piece on solo cups over top of a container, this is what it looks like. Okay, from there I'm just going to jump right into the mixing process. Um, I am using art resin for this. It is a one-to-one -one ratio, so you want to do equal parts of your resin and your hardener. Here I am mixing um, seven ounces of each. It's not just for this piece. I actually used a little bit of the clear to do some layers over top of some other things I had been working on, um, but I figured it was better to just record it and you can use Art Resin's resin calculator to figure out how much you need to use or you can um, just kind of experiment with it. But you want to make sure that you do equal parts of both part A, the resin, and part B, the hardener. So once you have it measured out and um, make sure you measure in separate cups because that way if you accidentally go a little bit more than you needed, you can even out the other amount before you mix them together. So once you have both of your um, parts mixed out, you can combine them in another cup. Here I'm just using a solo cup. Um, personally, I've never had any problems using plastic with resin. I know some people have complained about um, their resin heating up and getting really hot or eating through plastic. Personally, I don't think I've done a large enough quantity for that to be an issue, um, but I can't speak to those who have had that problem. But in my experience, Art Resin has not heated up any noticeable amount and it's been pretty easy to work with. Um, so here I am just scraping the sides, making sure I get all of the resin that I poured out into that solo cup and I will be mixing off camera for three minutes. I didn't want to sit here and show you guys me mixing for three minutes because I thought that would be really boring, but um, that is the minimum amount of time to mix for this art resin. Okay, once you have your resin mixed, um, then it is time to mix your colors. So here I am just splitting up that clear resin into a bunch of smaller three ounce plastic cups um, that I will be using each one for a different color. So I am doing a beach theme, so I am doing a lot of blues and teals and some light blues, and I'm also going to mix up some white and some of like a tan beachy sand color. I did not actually end up using that. I ended up using real sand, but I will still show you how I mixed all these colors. So up first is my deep blue. Um, so I just take a tiny drop of that blue and put it in that cup. And then I'm going to take um, my other colors and do the same. You want to use less than 10%. Um, I think Art Resin specifically says 6% of colorant to resin ratio. Um, so here you can just see that I'm squeezing a little drop of each color into um, these cups and then I will be adding glitter and um, some metal flake um, and I will show you that next. But right now I'm just adding a tiny bit of all of my colors. Um, this is some glitter that I'm adding in and this um, would have been the color I used for the sand. It's like a copper and white mixture, but I ended up not using that when I poured my piece. Um, but it was actually a really beautiful color. But just for reference, you know, if you don't have sand handy, this is a good way to make that um, beachy, coppery color. It's copper from Artist Loft and then some metallic white craft paint. And then I just squirted a little bit of my, I think it's called Casting Craft, um, white pigment in there as well. So um, this is my metal flake. This one's called Mary Jane. I'm pouring that in my dark teal along with some of the blue. It's called Bluegasm. They are absolutely beautiful. Um, they're not that expensive. Um, they're primarily used for auto detailing, but they have so much sparkle to them that I love to add it to my resin. Um, and then these other smaller containers are just regular craft glitter that I got on Amazon. Um, and that is my casting craft white. Um, 
I'll have to double check that name, but I will make sure to link it below in the description box. So once I have all of my paints and my glitters poured into my cups, then I will start mixing them. And you just want to make sure it's very thoroughly mixed so there are no um, translucent parts while you're pouring. So I'm just going to go through each one here. It was a little hard for me to figure out where the actual camera was um, and just show you how I mix them together. Just stir for, you know, a solid 30 seconds and um, see all the colors become more opaque. This is sped up just a little bit um, just because if I left it totally in real time, it would have been the longest video ever. So um, you just stir until it's mixed. There's not really a specific time frame for that. But you can see in here how shiny those metal flakes are already um, and they're mixing in with that teal and it makes a really beautiful kind of like ocean green color. And here is, um, I mixed in that beachy sand color that is actually really quite beautiful but I didn't end up using. But for anyone who is interested in um, making a beach scene and you don't have any sand, that's a really good way to make that color. It's almost more like a tropical sandy beach color. So it is copper, white, um, with just a little bit of gold. All right, and so I'm almost done here, just mixing my last color. It's this deep blue, I'm personally my favorite of all of these. Um, and then once I am done with that, I went in and added just a drop of silicone to each cup and um, stirred them just maybe for two seconds just to get it in there. Um, that helps with creating a lot of the detail, the um, feathering effects, those cell effects that are really beautiful in a resin painting. So that is how I mixed my colors and then I will show you how I pour everything. Okay, so this was my very first attempt at a beach painting, so a lot of it was just experimentation, but I will just jump right in and show you how I did it. Um, I started with applying a thin layer of clear resin um, on one side that I was going to use to hold my sand. I actually did have real sand that I brought home from Ocean City, New Jersey. Um, my fiance and I went there for a beach weekend a little while ago and I just brought home a water bottle full of sand and thought maybe I would try it out in some of my paintings. Um, so you can see I'm just patting it down into that resin and just packing it on pretty thick there. As it dries um, it gets a little bit darker and it looks more like wet sand um, which for what I'm going for worked out really well for me um, but if you want it to look like you know the warm dry sand I haven't quite figured out how to make that work yet um, but like I said this was only my first attempt and so I'm sure I will have some more experimentation in the near future um, so after I laid down my sand I got started on laying out my water um, so this is that deep really beautiful almost like cerulean blue and then I poured that uh, dark green teal color that had those metal flakes in it and I just started going from the darkest to the lightest shade and just kind of setting up for a gradient um, like I said this was kind of an experiment to see whether this technique worked or not um, ultimately I was pleased with it but it did take a little bit of playing around with it to make it work um, so here I'm going in with my blue and just filling up that middle area and then I'm going to take my lighter almost like sky blue or robin's egg blue and fill in that last section. And then um, I'm just going back in and adding some more of the darker colors for contrast there um, just because I wanted it to look more like waves instead of just one gradient because I thought that might look more like a sky. Um, so I'm just adding in a little bit to blend those colors together and um, still kind of sticking with the separation by color but just bringing them down a little bit further. And so here I'm just getting a little bit closer to that sandy area, um, just filling in that space and letting the colors start to blend together a little bit. So now I'm taking um, just a little bit more of that teal and there's only a little bit of space left there so I am almost done with prepping the water. 
and once I have that done I'm just gonna take the heat gun and start to blend everything out and kind of figure out what my next steps are going to be. Here I'm just pouring a little bit more of that clear um, just to make sure everything is coated so that when I use that heat gun the sand doesn't go flying. Because I learned the hard way that it doesn't always like to stay put. Um, so here I'm just doing some of that blending with the heat gun. It also will pop any bubbles that are in the resin. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of a glare just because resin is so shiny. But you can see those colors starting to um, feather out and blend together a little bit and give that ocean wave look to the piece. So this is also just some experimenting, um, kind of moving those colors around. And here I'm just, you know, tilting it a little bit to blend things out a little bit more um, and make sure the whole entire panel is coated. So the next step, I decided to take more of my dark blue and dark green and bring some of that texture down through the rest of the piece um, so that it would look like waves are crashing. And so I just did some more blending with the heat gun because while the darker colors are important, I don't want it to have a harsh line because then it won't look like water. And so just a little bit more tilting um, just to give it a more natural feel and let the resin kind of shift and, you know, make the shapes on its own. And here I'm just going around the sides and making sure they are covered. Um, personally, I like to have the artwork carry over onto the sides of my piece. I've done um, some commissions where I've taped the sides and then painted them black at the end. And while it looks really, really nice and professional, I just like the way it looks to have the color carry down. Um, so here I started to add my white, and I'm using the heat gun to feather it out and make it look kind of like that sea foam um, that happens when the waves crash. So like I said, a lot of this was um, experimentation. So what I'm doing here is I'm pouring some clear resin and then dripping the white on top of it um, so that as the clear resin spreads out, it kind of spreads the white with it and creates those cells and that feathering effect. So this was my first attempt with it and it didn't come out perfectly, but I'm still pretty pleased with um, the way the piece turned out in general. So I'm sure as I get to do more of them, I will have a little bit more success um, with the lacing effect of that white. Um, but here I did some tilting to kind of spread it out and give it more of that effect, um, which was pretty successful and worked out for what I was going for. So you can see that most of those colors have blended and that gradient that I talked about is really showing up. Um, and here I'm just taking some broken shell pieces and sprinkling them in the sand. Um, and then as they kind of sink in a little bit, you know, the clear resin goes over top and it looks like they're in that water. Here I'm just flattening them out, making sure they're in the sand and that they will stay as the piece dries. And then just dripping a little bit more clear over top, like I said, to make it look like it's underwater. And then I'm just taking my heat gun and popping those bubbles and moving that white around just a little bit so that um, it looks like it's breaking on the sand and not just, you know, completely over top of it. And then just adding a little bit more white because, you know, it's an experiment and why not? And just trying to make those waves look a little bit more defined. And then just some more tilting. And I am just about done but just adding a few more little detail lines of those lighter colors um, just to make it look like breaking waves and then repeating the same steps with the heat gun to feather things out and make it look more natural 
So I am pretty much um, finished with this piece. You'll just see me going in with just a few more drips of that clear and then the white over top of it. Um, I found that the white tends to feather out a little bit more than the other colors and I just wanted to add in those last drips so that there is that contrast so that it pops against the blues. Um, but other than that, I am pretty much done with this piece, and that is how I made my very first ocean painting. And then I will show you um, some photographs so you can see it in better lighting. Once I was done pouring, this is what my painting looked like. So then I let it sit. Um, art resin in particular takes 72 hours for a full cure, um, 24 hours to be dried to the touch. Um, so here is what the final piece looks like. And I have to say I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I know that I need to work on the lacing and the white, um, but ultimately I'm very happy with how my very first attempt at this technique turned out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below letting me know what you think. Um, you can also subscribe to be notified when I post videos in the future. If you have any suggestions or questions um, that you would like me to explain in future videos, just leave a comment below and I will make note of that. That is all I have for you today, but if you enjoyed this video, check out the other videos on my channel and I will see you next time. Thank you everyone. Bye.